Hi. Hello. Hey, we realize that uh, we haven't done a post in quite a long time. And in fact, I was just kind of thinking about it. I remember when we were doing a post in uh, the time of COVID, it was one of our first ones. And uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, when we're doing the post, because people were hungry and they, they wanted hope, it was like 5,000 people tuned in, like on the little countdown, there's like 5,000 people because people were hungry and they needed uh, direction and hope. And so we've actually just been on a study uh, of doing covenant. And I was really just kind of struck by the season that we're going through. There's, there's a lot of stuff spiritually going on. And uh, I've noticed that a lot of covenant stuff like marriages or relationships or whatever are extremely challenged. Yeah. And the ability to cuss people out, to be angry, to defend yourself, ah, you know, all of that is is really really huge and i just really sense the lord saying speak life in um in john 10 that's exactly what's happening i mean uh jesus is basically saying i've come here to give you life and that more abundantly and my sheep know my voice but then he also goes on and he kind of says it like this um the enemies come to steal kill and to destroy and my sheep aren't going to hear his voice in other words there's an enemy who's speaking, and he's talking about hearing, so there has to be words that are going out. And the enemy's speaking these words, and he's saying, don't listen to what's being spoken, but rather listen to this. I've come to give you life, and that more abundantly. So I'm really struck by this right now for the body of Christ, um, that if you would begin to speak and loose life over situations, and maybe that's marriages, maybe that's uh, your church, or whatever that is, but there's... There's not an opportunity just for the for the Word of God to work just right now, but I think that there's an opportunity for revelation for us right now. There's different seasons when our understanding is open. If we would begin to speak life, even over things that you think are dead, uh, you watch what's going to happen. Now, uh, I don't want to take long at all because I know how we are in this world where, well, that took too long. So, um, Ezekiel 37 also came up. So, I'm going to have Angie just kind of speak a little bit on this. It's... Um, uh, just keep this in, in your mind. And if, if you're like, oh, Ezekiel 37, I know that. I've, it's Valley of the Dry Bones. You bet. I'm sure you do know that. But many times it's in the very simple things that revelation comes. So just take a quick look at Ezekiel 37. I'm going to have uh, Vanna here do some reading, <laughs> if you don't mind, Vanna. Okay. The hand of the Lord. <laughs> the hand of the Lord came upon me. And brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. That's the church. Keep then going. he caused me to pass by them all around. Behold, they were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, Oh, Lord God, you know. Okay, now here's God asking something that only he can answer. And I'm still struck on the fact that God is a covenant God, and Ezekiel fully well knows. Here's God basically speaking and showing Ezekiel the church and going, look at the church, uh, or the people in the church. Look how dry they are right now. Can they uh, be saved? Can I do anything? And it's like Ezekiel's going, dude, you are the covenant, <laughs> so you know what can be done. Keep going, please. Uh, verse 4, again he said to me, prophesy to these bones. And say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. All right, now going with what God is saying in John 10.10 10, about speaking life, here's God, the very same thing, even in Ezekiel, telling Ezekiel, speak. Speak, man, that life and death that's mm -hmm. right in your power, and even concerning church or whatever covenant relationship it is right now, here's God saying this, I am a covenant God. I can totally remedy this situation, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Speak life. And and he's seeing in this uh, context, it's, it's like prophesying, and he's, he's telling him to speak life. Verse 5. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. That's John 10.10 10 life. It's also the Genesis life where God formed the man and breathe that life in him. And he's saying, surely, man, I'm going to do this. I'll do it through you, church, or you that are listening. I'll do it through you. But that breath of life is going in. And it's as you speak it. 
the easiest thing to do is for us to speak what we see, you know, mess. <laughs> Verse 6, I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. That's that's really encouraging. It's, it's like as... He's speaking it out. God starts to move. So, church, you can you can actually be uh, encouraged that as you're speaking it, things are happening. Verse eight. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, "Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God. Come." From the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. Okay, now you may have heard this before, like, ah, I've heard prophetic words before, I just read a word, and I heard that this happened, that happened, nothing really happens. And it's like he addresses it in verse 11, if you can go right there. Like all of us that have heard prophecies, and it's never really happened. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. There, there's no hope. Like, why? We shouldn't... Look, I, I hear what you're doing. I hear you're saying it's really nice, but there's, there's just no hope. And so God addresses it in verse 12. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves Ooh. and cause you to come up from your graves. And bring you into the land of Israel. My goodness. Here's God. It's not that he's saying, I don't hear what you're saying with that no hope stuff. He just overrules it. And he basically says, yeah, that place, church, or wherever it's been, or wherever that form or stink of death has been, where the enemy's been saying, you need a divorce. You need to get rid of these people. You need to get rid of that. Just cut off that really. Okay. Anywhere where there's death or a grave like that. I'm going to open up that grave and cause you to come up from your grave and bring you into the land of Israel, which means this. I'm going to bring you into your covenant. I'm going to bring you into that promise. And if you go to uh, Galatians 3, and I'll end here because I don't want to take too long. Galatians 3 is phenomenal because here's uh, Paul saying this. Uh, by the way, the blessings of Abraham. When God met Abraham and pulled him out of that tent that he was in, and showed him everything in the sky and the sand and said, everything I'm going to give to you. All these stars and descendants I'm giving to you. Uh, not only that, I'm going to give it to your descendants and your descendants after that. And if you go into the blessings of Abraham, there's actually seven of them. And Paul is saying in Galatians for us in the New Testament, God's not done with that covenant promise. And the blessings that he said that he wanted to pour on Abraham, they actually come upon us by faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the very thing that he said that he wanted with Abraham in covenant still belongs to us. He addresses the fact that, I get it, there's death, I get it, that there's contentions. But church, if we would speak life right now and prophesy that we're coming out of the grave, that that situation that we are, are in, is coming out of death, and the words of death are falling down, mm -hmm. that we may just see the blessings come upon the church by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we release life over you. Yeah. We speak life over you, and over your, your household, over your marriage, over your children. We speak life over your workplace. We speak life over your church. And Amen. if you don't belong to a church, find one. Find Amen. one that speaks life and get into it. In Jesus' name, we bless you with life. In Jesus' name, do the same. Amen. Amen.